Jackson Curtis is a sci-fi writer who also happens to drive for wealthy individuals like Yuri Karpov. When he realizes the world is on the brink of destruction, he goes all out to ensure the survival of his family. As he faces this crisis, fascinating twists and turns await. Stay tuned to unravel it all piece by piece. Before we start the story, if you enjoy our content, please support us by subscribing or liking so we can recap more films for you. Dr. Adrian Helmsley is a geophysicist scientist who is part of a research team studying the unprecedented effects of solar storms on the Earth. He meets with an astrophysicist named Satnam Tsuritani in India. They discover that neutrinos from the fiery sunspots are causing the Earth's core temperature to rise continuously. Helmsley later shares information about this phenomenon at a private party with a White House chief named Anheuser to ultimately reach the President of the United States. In 2010, President Thomas Wilson and other world leaders initiate a secret project aimed at ensuring the survival of the human race. Over 400,000 individuals have been selected to board massive ship decks located in the Chouming, Tibet region in southwest China, near the Himalayas. A Buddhist monk named Nima evacuated from the project while his brother Tenzin joins the massive ship project. Additional budgeting for this immense project is set through ticket sales to ordinary individuals at a price of 1 billion euros each. Additionally, in 2011, valuable artifacts, including the Mona Lisa and a smile by da Vinci, are brought onto the massive ship with the help of President's daughter, Laura Wilson, an art specialist in artifact identification and valuation. In 2012, Jackson Curtis, a sci-fi writer based in Los Angeles, works as a limousine driver for Russian billionaire Yuri Karpov. Jackson's ex-wife, Kate, and their mutual children, Noah and Lily, live in the home of Kate's boyfriend Gordon Silberman, a plastic surgeon. One day, Jackson comes to Gordon House to take his kids camping in Yellowstone National Park. When they arrive, they notice that the entire park is surrounded by military fences. Despite the barriers, they manage to get through, only to be apprehended by American military forces. Meanwhile, a man named Charlie Frust watches them from afar with a camera. Later, they are taken to meet Helmsley by military vehicles. When Jackson meets Helmsley, he recognizes him because he had read his latest book called Farewell to Atlantis. Helmsley and Dr. West then communicates through a video call with Satnam to ask for his opinion on the unprecedented rise in Earth's temperature. Satnam warns them that the Earth's crust has become unstable, and cities need to be evacuated soon as major disasters are imminent. Dr. West mentions that the Mayan calendar had predicted this event, lacking our modern resources. After Jackson and his children are released, they meet a man named Charlie who sarcastically asks what the government had said. Jackson responds, They said that the area is unstable and we should not have passed through the fences. But Charlie chuckles mockingly. In the next scene, Helmsley talks with Anheuser, who informs him that the heat is increasing drastically worldwide. He emphasizes the urgency of evacuations to save as many people as possible. Charlie has a radio station in his mobile home, and Jackson, curious about what is about to happen, approaches his van to talk. Jackson was intrigued as he had heard on his radio program that something was going to start from Hollywood. Charlie reveals a doomsday scenario through an animation he created, indicating it's the end of the world, the last day, and what happens after. He explains that governments do not want people to know about this event and anyone who tries to disclose it mysteriously dies. He then mentions a map, indicating they are building spaceships and selling tickets, but it requires being a Bill Gates-like figure, not for ordinary people. Jackson, seemingly incredulous, walks away, biding him a good day. Then a scene of the Earth splitting apart is seen, just as Kate and Gordon were busy shopping in the store. Suddenly, a chunk of the ground completely separates and a large crack emerges. Then Jackson, in somewhere else, gets informed about this incident through the television. Then, as he was escorting Yuri Karpov's twins, they say, We have tickets for the ship, 
and will survive. Right then, beside the limousine, noticing the earth splitting, he quickly heads off and rents a plane, putting a hefty price tag for it. Jackson contacts Kate and says, California is facing destruction. Gather up. You need to escape. She doesn't believe it and mentions that the governor stated everything is under control. Jackson hastily rushes to his ex-wife and kids to rescue them. Suddenly, a severe earthquake hits. At that moment, Jackson arrives and takes the kids, his ex-wife, and Gordon into the limousine. Truly, the end of the world is happening for real. Deep cracks are everywhere. The city is collapsing intensely, and the earth crumbles behind them. The earth and time are collapsing everywhere. If one day the world becomes like this, what should we do? However, Jackson, with this limousine, like a professional driver, pulls his family out of danger. In the end, they arrive at the same spot where Jackson previously rented the plane. Jackson tells Gordon, get behind the plane, we don't have time. But he replies, I only know a few basic flying lessons. They lift the plane off the ground in those critical final moments and finally leave California behind. While millions of people are vanishing and the Earth's crust is sinking into the Pacific Ocean in that area. Jackson wants to go to Yellowstone to get a map that Charlie was talking about. Apparently, now that the world is facing its own destruction, he believes Charlie's words. You know what? It's always the people who seem foolish on the surface that speak the truth and understand more than others. Jackson then heads towards where Charlie is, only to find he is not there. He thinks to himself that must be somewhere close. He locates him through a program that he is recording in, somewhere close to the van. Jackson gets into his van and finds him on top of a mountain. He asks for the map, saying, You should come with us. We have a plane. But Charlie replies, You won't succeed. It's not possible. At that moment, the earth suddenly begins to erupt, spewing out molten lava. But Charlie prefers to stay and die. Jackson quickly moves with his daughter in the van to the location of the plane. He puts his daughter down first, but then goes after the map. Suddenly the ground collapses, and the van gets pulled down. Eventually, when everyone thinks Jackson is gone and dead, he manages to pull himself out of the rubble. Just as the plane was moving and behind him volcanic eruptions were happening, he makes it to the plane and finds salvation. Through the map, they figured out that the giant ships are now in a region in China. At the same time, Anheuser, the White House Chief of Staff, announces that the President has no intention of leaving the White House, despite the Vice President's death and the disappearance of the White House spokesperson. He mentions being given executive powers to make important decisions in the President's absence. President Wilson bids farewell to his daughter, telling her to save herself. He then records his final presidential address, stating that a real event is unfolding uncontrollably. Meanwhile, Gordon, along with Jackson and his family, land in Los Angeles to find Yuri. Their larger plane was en route to China to board a ship. Jackson finds Yuri and pleads with him to take him and his family along. At that moment, his personal pilot, Sasha, tells him they have a plane for flight but need a pilot's help. Lily suggests that Gordon could assist as a pilot which Yuri agrees to. They quickly board the plane. In the final moments, the president meets with the families of the victims. However, a severe earthquake strikes. Simultaneously, news arrives that authorities in Italy are not fleeing and are staying in Vatican City to pray. The Vatican collapses, then shows President Wilson whispering that he is coming to his beloved wife. A massive tsunami with a large nav takes Wilson, leading to his demise. Along the way, Sasha announces they need to refuel, but are unsuccessful. As they approach China, they run out of fuel. However, Jackson, his family, Yuri, and others, including Yuri's girlfriend and kids, manage to timely exit the plane using luxury cars inside. The airplane crash lands, and Sasha dies. Then, the Chinese army helicopters are spotting them, and Yuri shows their tickets to board the ship 
leaving the Curtis family behind, along with his girlfriend, Tamara, because he found out about his secret relationship with Sasha. Meanwhile, the president's daughter, along with Helmsley and Anheuser, are getting ready to make their way to the giant Ark ship. Other world leaders, including the Queen of England, are seen heading towards Ark ship number four. Jackson and his family, along with Gordon and Tamara, succeed in reaching the ship with the help of Nima and his grandparents, who were on their way to the destination of the ship. Authorities are discussing how many people should board the ship, and Laura and Helmsley believe that everyone should be saved. They eventually agree to board everyone, and it is announced that in a few moments the doors will be opened. Jackson and entire family, along with Tamara and Gordon, enter a section of the ship with Tenzin's help, which belonged to American Contingent and where they kept the animals. However, an incident occurs along the way, resulting in Gordon's death and Tenzin getting injured. At the same time, we see Yuri with a large group of refugees in a path that eventually leads them to board the ship. While helping his son board, Yuri falls off and loses his life. Just as the tsunami was approaching, they realized that something was stuck in the hydraulics, causing the engine to shut down. At the same time, the tsunami collided with the ships, causing some to start taking on water. Jackson, in a moment of selflessness, rushed to the hydraulics to remove the obstruction, getting the ship's engine running again. Just as the ship was drifting out of control towards a collision with rocks, the engines sprang to life changing course just in time to avoid disaster. Everyone was saved, and Jackson and Kate rekindled their romantic relationship. As time passed, on the 27th day of the first month of the first year after saving humanity, we discover a romantic relationship blossoming between Helmsley and Laura. We then see that all the people have been rescued, eagerly awaiting to see the sunlight, after they open up the windows of the Ark, they hope to head towards the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa once the tsunami and floods have subsided, a place where the Drekensberg mountain range now stands as a vast dry land. This human salvation comes after enduring a series of natural disasters known in all religions as the Day of Reckoning.